welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm so excited to be here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So today we're talking about boundaries in your marriage. What does that mean? What's a boundary? A boundary is kind of a set, mostly internally, that people sense of guidelines or kind of rules where they feel comfortable living within that those set of rules and we and ours a lot of them overlap but they're not always identical so why why do so many people struggle with boundaries we hear about this all the time in all of our forums and they're not even necessarily asking about boundaries but they're sharing stories where boundaries are not happening or they're challenged with boundaries why is it so difficult It, it's difficult to learn some of these things. And when you marry somebody, they're different than you. Even if they grew up in the same country, the same religion, they are different. And things that we just sort of assume that others are going to live by. And so it's important to work those out, if possible, sooner rather than later. So that everything will be smooth, so that you'll understand each other's boundaries. I remember my mother told me, and I always remember that. I thought it was really good. She said, when you're raising your family, have as few rules as possible but make sure that the rules that you have are really important because you want everyone in the family to feel comfortable. You don't want so many rules that nobody can hardly move or do anything. So she said, have as few rules as possible, but make sure every one of those rules is really important. A rule is like a boundary. I, that's such a good, I, I, I remember you telling me that many times throughout my childhood and as an adult, I think some of us can go be guilty of going a little bit too rule crazy. And it's easier yeah. to be rule crazy than it is to be specific about the important rules. I think you brought it up when we were discussing this. Those of us who are Christians, we know about the 10 commandments. There's only 10. And I think every major religion has, uh, has a version of that where you don't, you shouldn't kill people. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't commit adultery. Yeah. <laughs> those are, those are things that pretty well all religions abide by. It's just that in, in Christianity, there's a, a list of 10. Those are 10 rules. Now there's a lot that goes under those rules, but those are major things that to live by. If you live by those, you'll be doing pretty well. Right. I love the analogy of the Ten Commandments. Even for people that don't, maybe or that aren't Christian or believe in other things, that analogy still applies. Having ten, there's not five hundred. <laughs> there might be five hundred subcategories, but there's ten main ones. And I think that that's the message in this video today. Is we want to talk about five main boundaries that you should have in your marriage, or hopefully you already have in your marriage, and that you should try to develop in your marriage because. That not having boundaries creates a lot of chaos, a lot of uh, unhappiness. If I had to narrow down five of the most important fascinating women principles, I would say boundary is definitely in the top five. It's so important and it, and it can be difficult to develop these and set them. So we're going to talk about the five areas that we think are the most important that you should be thinking about, or hopefully already have uh, set these boundaries in your marriage. The first one is finances. What's under that one? Your budget, things you agree to buy versus not buy. For example, for Bob and I, I don't, maybe it's similar for some of you, anything over a hundred dollars, we talk to each other and we yeah. get sort of, we agree to, it's not like so much permission, but we're in this together. So we agree on something. If it is over a hundred dollars, I check with him and say, Hey, I'm thinking getting this. Is that okay? Right. Another thing under finances, it's who's spending what on what you just mentioned that investments, yes. who is allowed to invest? What, what are we allowed to, what are we? Wanting to invest in that, this includes goals with finances, being on the same page with goals, yeah. budgeting. I think you mentioned loaning money. There should be boundaries around all of these, taking risks with money. That's what's all kind of the umbrella of finances. And when you set these boundaries, ideally you set them when you're not in the middle of it. When things are going fine, you sit down with your husband and say, you know, I'd love to, you know, kind of work out some of our boundaries when, when money is not an issue that day. And so right. it's not a hot button. For those of you that are hearing this and you're saying, well, what about if we don't agree? We're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> We're going to get to that in just a minute. But we want to go through the first five before we get into all of that. Okay. The second one is friendship boundaries. What, what's under that? The first thing that comes to my mind is friendships with the opposite sex. Friends, say so you may have a friend that doesn't like your husband or vice versa. How much time you spend with friends. For example, Bob and I had, we started this out when we were very first married. We do not, we agreed, we do not have friends with people of the opposite sex 
that are not our friends together. It's going to look different for everybody, I think, because you might have just a little bit of a different scenario, but th that's yours. Some of these boundaries are things that may not be said. Some of these things are things that you may just be. And then that, that's great too. And sometimes they do need to be said. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's important to explain when we're talking about these boundaries, because I, I can't think of a time when we talked about that boundary. It's just kind of something that is. <laughs> it just kind well, of sometimes, you, sometimes you just understand it. You just both are similar. So you just don't do yeah. it. You don't always have to set every boundary. Some of the things that also fall within the friendship boundary are friendships that you don't support. If he's friends with someone that you don't get along with, or maybe somebody that you're angry with or somebody that you have a, a, a history with that can cause boundary yes. issues. That can be yes. a problem. Um, it mm -hmm. also includes taking sides with people, taking sides with topics, maybe politics with other people and not prioritizing your, your relationship that can cause boundary problems too. So friendships, taking sides, having friends with the opposite sex, spending too much time, with friends maybe it's a friend that they have that you like and you support that friendship but they're spending too much time with them that also falls under the friendship umbrella the third one is this is probably the biggest one privacy what's under that one privacy is just a whole big boundary in and of itself it, it's things like getting into your spouse's phone looking at email without permission yeah. looking at emails reading journals kind of snooping. Uh, I hate yeah. to say it. It, it kind of falls under that. It, it, interrupting him all the time when he said he needs alone time. Anything to do with his boundaries that you kind of instinctively know, or you wouldn't kind of sneak to do, to do it. I think this also includes um, prying a little bit about his yes. history or his past. I think it's great to get to know everyone. We want to get to know, especially for those of us that are in the dating, those of you that are in the dating world, of course you want to get to know them, but sometimes there can be that fine line of prying and being a little too nosy and that's a boundary. And I think a lot of ladies don't realize, well, I should know everything. I hear this all the time. I should know everything about him right away. If he's got something to say, I want to hear it now. That's a fine way. Here's the problem. The more he trusts you, this is all about trust. The more he trusts you, the more he will share those things. But trying to dig it out of someone when you have not earned that level of emotional trust makes, makes him put the wall up more. The wall of reserve goes up. If you are, if you are asking things that you don't have permission from him emotionally to do. We recently, I just have to share this. We recently, uh, this past summer, did a video, a short slash reel of you and dad uh, acting out a first date and something you should never say and I'll play it for you. I'll play it right here. This looks like a really nice place. I thought this was a great restaurant for a first date. So have you ever been diagnosed with any mental illnesses? And you can see in this video, they are kind of, it's supposed to be humorous, but the reaction that we received from this video of, do you have any mental illnesses? Was, I couldn't even believe it. People thought that we were horrible for saying that you shouldn't say that. But the thing with it, this is what they're missing is that the boundary part of this. So especially the younger generation, the, 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 the folks right now that are dating and more younger are missing that this is a boundary issue. You prying about his mental health on the first date can be a boundary. Now it may not be, he may just give you all that right away and that's fine. But if he's not ready to share it or she, if the, if the, the person's not ready to share that, that's a boundary issue. It, it, they shouldn't have to share that if they're not ready. Well, it's, it, they shouldn't be ready on the first date. I mean, that's just, we, we did something extreme thinking that everybody will totally get this and they did. Yeah. That was alarming because one of the things, the little scenarios we did was, do you have any sexually transmitted diseases? Well, who says that? Didn't your husband say no one says that on a first date? And then we got all this argument. So the comments were so <laughs> brutal. People were saying that we were awful and, and just like, this is the worst advice I've ever heard. And it was shocking because it was like, but that's a boundary issue. You, you're, you're crossing someone's back. And that's fine if they want to tell you, but let them share it. Let them wait, wait, there's time. You're going to go on more dates. Hopefully there's going to be time. There's no pressure. And the reason why we're bringing this up under privacy is because there's a lot of times we're being nosy and prying. There's it's being lost. It's lost. People don't realize what no being nosy and prying really even is anymore. Um, and this isn't just dating. This is obviously, you mentioned the emails and the phone calls. We'll get into a little bit more about, again, how to set those boundaries and how to develop those boundaries. But we've had some of our ladies say that they should be able to go through the their husband's phone because it should there should be no secrets. But can you explain well, why that's a boundary issue? Well, why would you want to, unless you're suspicious? Uh, you know, if I look at, Bob doesn't care if I look at his phone, but, but what's in there is a bunch of junk emails that he goes through. I, uh, there's no way it even enters my mind to go through his phone when we have such a, a close relationship, it doesn't even occur to me. <clears throat> I've even heard ladies say that their therapists have told them that they should have full access 
to each other's phones and emails. Therapists have told some of our ladies, you should just go ahead and have access so that there's no trust. But the problem with that is what? It doesn't work. It's a lack of trust. And by the way, therapists are, don't always stay married. They have, their, some of them have their own. See, Bob would never say that. He would never say that to somebody. You need to, you need to do this. So they, therapists are not all cut out of the same cloth. My problem with that philosophy and that way of thinking is that trust is not something that you can always see. Trust is something that's inside of you. And if you have to rely on what you see in his phone, you're going to have all kinds of problems. You're going to read a text that you may misinterpret. You're going to see a photo that you may misinterpret. It's going to be so many misunderstandings and you're still not developing trust because there's other ways that he can be unfaithful to you. There's other things he can do besides the phone. So it's not even solving everything. And if you're, if you're looking in his phone, it means you don't trust him. And if you don't trust him, he'll know he's not trusted. And that breeds more lack of trust. It, it just, it just isn't a good idea. Yeah. Grabbing his phone and sneaking. Now, I'm not saying that if he gives you permission to get in his phone, Hey, will you no, get my phone? Right. Answer that. That's fine. If he says, go for it, get my phone, look in there for me. Like that's different. We're talking about snooping. We're talking about crossing the boundary of his personal things. Same now, with also, journals. Has, Same journals. With journals. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't know if people even keep journals and men keep journals anymore, but personal belongings. I'm going to take your car and I'm going to use your car today. Like, or, or I just took your car today, or I just took this out of your closet today and loaned it to somebody. That's a boundary issue. If I was to borrow a sweater or jacket of his, I would ask him first. I wouldn't just take it. Or loan it. Oh loaning no, I would never loan. Oh no. Hey, so-and-so is spending the night and I gave him your socks or whatever. Like you, you want to make sure that those boundaries are, are healthy and set because that can cause a lot of hurt. If, some respect. people may not care. Some people may not care at all, but some people do. And that's why we're talking about this today. Even if they don't like say, Bob, I say, can I, can I loan this, this guest your socks? You say, oh, sure. But he, because of respect, he appreciates it when I ask. Right. The fourth one is disagreements and hurt feelings. The, the, this has to do <laughs> with insensitive comments, insensitive acts. This is really, this is very common. Um, and it's usually, I hate to say it. It's usually the guy that's being accused of being insensitive, um, making comments that are hurtful. This also includes major decisions that are being made in your marriage. You know, I just went ahead and enrolled like our kids in this expensive school. Sorry, I didn't tell you, you know, that kind of thing. Also, yeah. um, parenting styles is under hurt feelings and disagreements. Uh, goals as a couple in general. Um, you know, when we get married, you know, or when we retire, I want to buy a house here and you know, you're going to just deal with it. <laughs> We're going to move and <laughs> you're just going to deal with it. Um, and then religion is also under this one. And that's a real hot topic for many <laughs> Yeah. And, and all these things require, that's why it's so important to know who you marry before you marry them, to really get to know somebody. Because like Bob and I, we, uh, we have a great marriage, but our parenting styles are not the same. But what we learned is that some of what his parents did, I thought was a great idea. And some of what my parents did, he thought was a good idea. So we kind of combined the two. And, yeah. uh, but the important thing is that you no, don't have it so set in your mind that it, like that he has to be of your religion or it's not going to work. You better find that out before. Now, sometimes people convert to a religion after they get married. And then you have to face that because he wasn't like that before. And, or you weren't like that. So you find another religion and you, you join it. Then the key to that is to include that person in every step with respect. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit more about this one, number four, uh, when we get down to how to set a boundary. The last one is probably the hottest button one. It's health. This includes diet vitamins, exercise, physical appearance, lifestyle choices, you know, boundaries within that are really delicate. Why is health such a difficult boundary? Because we, we instinctively think of it, well, this is the exception because this is important. <laughs> if, if it's really important, if it's, if it's to do with those things, sort of like, then there's no boundaries. All bets are off. And that isn't really true. I know for me, I have a lot of health boundaries myself personally. Like I have certain things that I want to eat and that I don't want to eat. And I have certain things that I, I feel like I need as far as physical exercises. And so it's just something that I, I really need. And I've had to set that boundary for not only others around me, like I need this, but for myself and I have to stick with it. And it can be really challenging because some the people around you maybe don't support you or they think that what you're doing is silly um, or they don't agree with your choices and they think that you're being you know, too hard on yourself. So this is really delicate. So now that we've gone through the five, let's talk about how to set a boundary if you don't have one. So the first step is to decide them, of course. And what are my boundaries? You might have to take a lot of time to figure this out if if you're a person that just doesn't really have a lot of these. And or if it's hard for you, maybe you grew up in a home where there weren't a lot of rules, there weren't a lot of boundaries, people were, you know, getting in each other's 
space all the time, this could be difficult. But the first thing is to decide them and, and commit to them. How do you have the discussion if the boundary includes the other person and your, your husband, if it includes him kind of like being a part of it? How do you set it? Well, ideally, ideally, you're going to talk about this when you're not in the middle of an altercation. When you're not having an issue with it, when everybody's calm and, and you're just saying, you know, like, can I talk to you a little bit tonight? I want to just discuss some things. So make sure that the boundaries that you need to set are, like we said in the beginning, important. Not stuff like don't throw your socks around. I mean, you can right. set a boundary like that, but are you going to die on that hill? Because right. you, you're going to damage your relationship. If you, you can set any boundary you want, but if you have too many or too frivolous ones, you're going to, you may destroy your relationship. So sit down and say, can I talk to you and have this planned out? This, this really bothers me. And when you talk to him, talk about, don't accuse him, say, I feel this way. And don't say, I feel like you are doing this. It's, that's just <laughs> another way of, of blaming him. Just say, I would, I would really feel so good if we had this in our relationship. If, if we discussed important purchases with each other before, that, that would mean a lot to me. In fact, it's so important to me that I really can't put up with this other way of doing it any longer. And because I cannot do it, this is, this is what I have to insist on. And if, and if thing is, if he won't do it, because sometimes they won't. If you cannot or will not do this, this is what I'm going to do. If it's that important to you. I have a good example to share for those of you that maybe are questioning, like, what do I do if he doesn't comply? Or what do I do if he doesn't agree? I have a good example of that happening to me <laughs> and what I did. So I, when we were first married, I tried, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I tried to set a boundary of how about we never go to bed angry? <laughs> How about we never go to sleep if we've had an argument? I tried to do that, but I didn't really do it the right way. I started to do it when we would have some kind of a disagreement in the evening and I would try to push it and he would try to go to sleep and it didn't work. So I would try again and I would try again and I would try again. And finally, one day I just said, I don't want to go to sleep angry because I can't sleep. And he didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to do about that. So he just went to sleep. <laughs> So what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes he, you say it to him and he doesn't agree or he doesn't, it won't work for him. He can't, I know now looking back, he had given all he could give and he was tired. And then we worked it out the next day. So what I have learned is that I can't have that boundary with him. But what I can do is remember that I struggle at night. I struggle when we have disagreements at night. So I do my very, very best to keep the evening very calm and very pleasant. And I think about it ahead of time. And now it's not even a problem. Now it's not even something I ever even think about. That is a, a, an example of, we, it may not work. You may have to find something else that works for right. you, but you can't force him to follow your boundary. Does that make sense? Well, you could tell him, if you don't settle this before we go to bed, I'm going to leave you. But where would that, where would that leave your relationship? You, it's pointless. It, it's, that isn't what you want. You want something that works. What if he's the guy that's making the insensitive comments? How mm -hmm. would you set that boundary? But it's up to the individual person. But if, for me, I would say, when he's not doing it, you know, when you say things that are really cruel to me, it really hurts me. And if you say that to me again, this is what I will do. And whether it's leave the room or get in the car and go somewhere, if you do that again, ever again, this is what I will do. And th the catch is if you threaten to do something, you have to do it. If you don't do it, your words will mean nothing. But make sure what you, your threat is reasonable. You know, right. it's not something I'm going to, I'm going to go fly to Hawaii for a week. Like if somebody's really cool, say, always telling you you're fat or something like something that really hurts you. Say, if you ever do that again, that hurts me so bad. I will do this. I'm not going to put up with it and I'll just leave the room or I won't be making dinner that night or whatever it is you decide. Right. Um, because you do not have to put up with cruel treatment. What about the guy that is just continuing to break your boundaries and you're setting them and you're leaving the room and he's just continuing to do them? What would, what would you do then? I think it depends on the situation. Why is he doing this? Is there something about her? Is he angry with her about something? Uh, why is he doing this? There's always a reason. Because when they got married, they decided to get married. He was, obviously wasn't treating her that way or she wouldn't be doing it. So, so what if, I, I've heard this several times, men with tempers, they have a little bit of tempers. I'm not talking about abusive tempers. I'm talking about just, you know, you're, you're kind of saucy guy that just kind of gets a little bit venting on you or something. Yeah, well, or just a grumpy, <laughs> just a grumpy man that can get kind of like his temper. Temper, a guy with a bit of a temper. I'm not talking about abusive, but a guy with a bit of a temper. And, you know, the woman's trying to set boundaries with his temper and it's just not working. What would you do? I don't think she's being, I, from the very little I, I've got in the scenario, I don't think she's being firm enough. I don't think he really believes her because Bob said to me once, people like that, he has patients sometimes that have issues like that. And he'll say to the wife, does 
does Jim or whatever his name is, does he do this at work? No, no, he has friends. There. He, those people know how to control their temper when they need to. They don't do it when a policeman's standing by and going to hear him rant and rave about something. They can control it. They just don't choose to because they're taking you for granted. So it's not that they cannot. It's just that they, if they will not, it may take time for you setting a boundary and doing what you say. So I'm, you know, I'm not putting up with this. I will not. And this is a serious issue for me. You deal with this in some other way, but do not vent on me. You have a right to have respect for yourself and to be treated with respect. I agree with you. I think this is a really difficult one of putting the mirror in front of your face and saying, well, what are you, I know that what he's doing is, is not what you agree with, not ideal, but what are you going to, what are you willing to put up with? A lot of our ladies that struggle with boundaries, unfortunately, are, are usually the ones that are more sensitive and they just don't want to cause problems. They don't want to hurt anybody. And I totally get it. I think that's why boundaries are tough, oftentimes more tough for women. We're sensitive. We don't want to hurt anybody. It's not every woman. Some of us are real tough, but you know, well, we don't like confrontation. We don't yeah. like confrontation and unpleasant feelings. And I mean, I'm that way. So we often will let something slide a while rather than have a confrontation. And actually there's a, there's something to be said for nipping it in the bud with some things. Yeah. The sooner you do it and more upfront, like, no, I, I'm not putting up with it. Putting a brand, putting a boundary in place is a delicate balance of soft and hard. And that is so challenging for some people because you don't want to come in too hard and you don't want to go too, too strong but you also want to remain calm and you want to have it under control. So this can be tough. So don't be hard on yourselves if you struggle with this. And it's going to take practice. Like you've said so many times, it's going to take time to develop mm -hmm. these boundaries. Maybe you only struggle with one area and that one area is just taking a lot of time. Don't, don't give up because this is so important for your marriage. Because you want that deeply romantic marriage. And that's what we're going for. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And so you can have that wonderful, romantic, lifelong relationship. Yes. For all of you that have not read Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, you definitely need to check out our links below. If you read her book, there's so much more about building a lifelong loving marriage and in in each chapter in that book will help you. And boundaries is just one topic of many. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that now. Hit that button because it helps our channel grow. We really appreciate your support so that we can be here every week and deliver this content for you and also hit a like on the video if you liked it so that we know that you're watching us and we're here every week so don't forget to check back with us next time we have an instagram page we have a facebook group we hope you will all hop on there and join us in those forums as well and submit your comments below or maybe you have some tips for the ladies out there of your own for boundaries definitely drop those down below too we'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next time, Bye. Next time.